Hey, horror fans, once again, it's the Horror Mize Money G, and today we're going to go over my top five worst horror films of 2017. Now, of course, I did my top 10 uh, horror films of 2017, because, like I said before, we had a good year of horror. Uh, one of the biggest uh, box office of horror was uh, It. But, unfortunately, we also had a lot of bad horror movies. Yes, we did. Uh, we had a very disappointing horror film uh, called The Mummy. Uh, as Universal Studios once again tries to reboot their Universal Monster Pictures, but, unfortunately, The Mummy was a very big, huge disappointment. Uh, we also had some other really bad movies to come about this year, and uh, that's why we always like to talk about how bad these movies were. And, uh, once again, I will go over my top five worst horror films of 2017 the last chance for us to talk about how bad stupid and how effed up these movies were now before i begin my top five i want to give my uh highly dishonorable uh, uh choice that didn't crack the top five it was still bad to my opinion and it is the void yes a lot of people loved The Void. They thought it was a very great horror film, and I watched it, and I didn't see what they saw. All I saw was a very bad film. Uh, you had two lead actors that were very bad. You had this married couple who are going who are going through a rough patch because she lost. She had a miscarriage of a child, and the husband he just seemed very irritable. I didn't like the two characters at all. I didn't like the motivations of the um, the bad guy in the picture. His motivations were never fully explained. He would give long speeches that didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, I love the practical effects. The practical effects were great. That was the only saving grace of the film. But unfortunately, he didn't save the bad acting, the bad dialogue, and the lack of motivation of the uh, main antagonist. It's just like he seemed like he would ramble on for like a good 10 to 15 minutes of making speeches that made no sense whatsoever. Uh, lack of direction. Uh, lack of a finality, even the ending left was, was like all vague, and, and I just didn't like the film at all. Uh, didn't make my top five, but I once again will highly choose my most uh, highly disrecommended film is The Void. Now, let's go on to number five. So, my fifth first film of 2017 number five will be Resident Evil the final chapter which is kind of sad because I actually do like the Resident Evil uh, films uh, I thought they were highly entertaining full of very great action I love how they tried to incorporate it most of the story in from they got from the video game that this is based upon uh, even though I know the last two films weren't that great but they were certainly better than this kind of piece of junk mess that they decided to put together and obviously they made it for a cash grab obviously because this film is highly incompetent it's full of uh, uh, convoluted plot holes uh, the continuity uh, that we see in this film doesn't match the continuity that we know of this film but the worst thing of all is the action sequences it's obviously whoever put this together didn't know what the hell they were doing because when they edit the shit out of this film it cuts so much you can't even stay on one piece of action for at least a second. It's chock full of edit that makes it seasick. And I've been on eight, nine cruises. I never gotten seasick at all. And this film made me seasick. I mean, it was edited poorly. Uh, and I feel sorry for Mila Jolovich because uh, she's the only best bright thing uh, of this movie. And I, I know that she really poured her heart out on this uh, movie. But Paul W.S. Anderson and whoever decided to edit this piece of shit, uh, they just need to be fired and not work on any other movies again because it was terrible. I mean, come on now. If you're, if you're not going to choreograph your action sequence together, then there's no need to even attempt to try to edit it out because it makes it even worse. At least if you're going to fix something, fix the action sequences or at least hire better choreographers, fight choreographers. I mean... One of the best things I love about the Resident Evil uh, movies is Mila Jolovich and her action sequences. They're pretty good, especially the first two movies. I mean, come on now. They've done better than this, but that's the main reason why I hated this film. And that's why it's on number five, Resident Evil, the final chapter. Now, coming in at number four, we have Underworld Blood Wars. Oh, boy. Now, again, I love this series. 
I love the mythology. It's great that they've taken these two supernatural creatures, vampires and werewolves, and that to make them not just more than supernatural beings. They're actual species that have supernatural qualities, and they were created by, uh, by this huge um, genetic factor. And I love how they've incorporated that into this series. But unfortunately, it looks like they've run out of ideas. Uh, fortunately, in this latest uh, installment of the Underworld franchise, uh, uh, it's just very boring. Um, I didn't like half of the action, not the action sequence, I didn't like any of the acting. It seemed more jaded, more flawed. The only Saver and Grace, just like with Resident Evil, with Mila Jolovich, is Kate Beckinsale, Celine. Uh, she's still fantastic, but there's just simply running of ideas to do with the show. I mean, there's nothing more they can do. If I were the studios, I would just make this into a TV show. Because there's, there's such stories and mythology that you can put on a TV show, and it's simply time to stop making movies out of them. I mean, come on now. It, it's enough's enough. Either you're going to put a finality to it, or, and stop making these pictures, or just 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 call the uh, end. Because sometimes I know movie studios they're there to trying to line the bottom line, they're trying to milk as quick as they can. But come on now, let's stop with making bad movies. This is a great franchise, and I loved the first three movies. I really didn't like Awakening that much, and I really hated this picture. It's an insult to the Celine character. Uh, Definitely miss Victor because <laughs> he was the best villain out of all one. I actually love Marcus too, but this Marius character, he was he was just poorly developed. I really didn't like his motivations. And like I said, the only saving grace is Kate Beckinsale. But it's time to put it into Blood War uh, of the Underworld movies. Let's make it a TV show because you can do a lot more with this mythology on a TV show as opposed to the movies because they're simply just running out of ideas. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's filmed great. The cinematography is excellent. I love the uh, the Snow Palace. I love the new look of Celine they did when after she got there. But how she got there seemed a bit colluded, uh, convoluted to me. Really not explained very well. All of a sudden she goes into this pool and then she comes out and all of a sudden she can all these uh, powers that she has now. But um, like I said, it's time to put an end to the Underworld series. They ran out of ideas. Let's make it a TV show. So my number four is going to be Underworld Blood Wars. Coming in at number three will be The Mummy. Oh man, did I really want to like this film. Uh, as everyone who knows me, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Universe of Monsters. I grew up watching the Universe of Monsters. They got me into horror when I first was little. Uh, most body knows that my first experience in horror was watching the 1943's Mummy. I loved it very much. Uh, so I got into horror in the first place, and uh, after the misstep of uh, Dracula Untold that was supposed to kickstart the so-called uh, Universal Monsters Resurgence, and here they were trying to start another universe, uh, they're called Dark Universe, with this piece of shit right here, and Tom Cruise... The only thing he seems to be good at now is Mission Impossible movies. He's totally miscast here as this... Uh, well, can't get it... Uh, Mercenary of Fortune soldier? Mercenary of Fortune or Fortune, whatever you want to call him, mercenary. He's totally miscast because the guy has flaw. He's not a good guy. And Tom Cruise, he's just too nice of a guy to play that type of character. He should have got somebody else. Uh, the comic relief, he was annoying as hell. Uh, the female companion, she didn't bring anything else to the, um, to the series at all. You would think you would have a better, strong female lead, but all she does is uh, does a lot of exposition and then cries and whines for uh, Tom Cruise's character when she gets into trouble. Uh, like I said, the female character, all she does is whine and moan, and she does a lot of exposition and cries for Tom Cruise's character to save her. Uh, she seems more like a damsel in distress than an actual strong female lead. Uh, like I said, it was PG-13. We didn't see any, uh, whatchamacallum, uh, really any blood, you know, and there was, I mean, and I knew they had an idea because there were some creepy moments in the film. And that's why I'm hoping they would go for it. I mean, come on now. I'm pretty sure Brandon Frazier, uh, who played the mummy in the 1999 version, is laughing his ass off right now. He's saying, ha ha, ha ha, y'all fucked this up. And he really did. And unfortunately, uh, the movie didn't do very well. It probably killed the dark universe. Probably because, again, 
if you're going to create a universe, you should try to create a story first before you do your world building. You can always dump a little Easter eggs onto the whatchamacallit as they tried to do in this movie. But they were so concerned, they were so worried about building universe that they forgot to build a story, an excellent story. So unfortunately, that's why the movie failed. So number three is The Mummy. Coming in at number two will be the movie The Rings. Oh boy, here we go again. Uh, after uh, the failed attempt of Rings 2. Now, I did like Rings 2. I actually thought I probably wanted people to actually like Rings 2. No, it wasn't as good as the first Rings. It did have some good qualities in it, and I really did enjoy Rings 2. But I didn't think it uh, merited this particular movie, and I'm pretty sure they thought they waited long enough. Hey, let's go back and create, let's go back and rebuild the uh, Rings franchises. Uh, the Rings franchise, let's get a, uh, another movie, and this time we'll call it Rings. Don't get me wrong, I actually like the idea that they tried with this movie. Uh, a professor gets a hold of the cursed tape and he gets all his students to watch it, And but he wants to uh, see what effect it will have on his students and to keep them safe, they're supposed to allow somebody else to watch it and call them their tether. So that way they will not die within seven days. They were just executed wrong. I feel sorry for the lead actress because she really tries. And I believe the guy from um, the Big Bang Theory, I forget his name. Someone knows me his name. Just put his uh, name in the comments because I, I don't watch his show, so I don't remember his name. I thought he was okay in the film as the professor, but unfortunately he was just executed wrong. Uh, the opening scene reminded me too much like the first uh, Final Destination. I hated the ending. It was very convoluted. Uh, Samara doesn't look as frightening and creepy as she did. I mean, she still looks creepy because that's how they designed her, but it just wasn't as frightening as it was in the first one. It's just very convoluted. Didn't go anywhere. Like I said, it was too boring, too dull, and I hated the ending. That's why Rings is my number two worst movie of 2017. Well, I guess you guys should know by now what my number one stinkeroo picture of 2017 is. Yes, it is the Bye Bye Man. God, this movie sucked real bad. Oh, man. And what, made it so, what makes it so bad is that it's actually a pretty good idea. But it is executed. I mean, they just totally fucked this up. The leads are terrible. We don't care anything about them. The leads are terrible. Uh, the execution was awful. And again, it's rated PG-13 again. Why do they think that the audience is stupid? How the hell are you going to take a guy with a shotgun and shoot somebody with it and they're not noping any, any blood? He shoots this person point blank with a shotgun and instead of seeing the body splatter with blood everywhere, we get some green shit. And like, the guy shoots the person point blank with a shotgun. The body should be riddled with, with pellets. And every should be blood everywhere. Brain splat, I mean, brain, brain, oh boy. <laughs> brain matter should be everywhere. Guts should be spilled up. But all we get is her body slumped to the floor and some green shit hit to the wall. Because it's rated PG-13. So the studios think that teenagers are going to want to go see this. Nobody wanted to see that crap. I mean, come on. Even teenagers have better sense. We're not stupid, guys. Enough of this PT-13 bullshit. That's why I hate about this movie. I hated the acting. I hated the uh, uh, the, the CGI dog. I mean, the whole concept doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, basically the plot is is that if you say the bye-bye man's name, he'll come and torment you and eventually kill you. So you have anybody else or not anybody else who knows about the bye-bye man is supposed to want to kill them. Uh, that's what you have the, the witch Muhammad saying, don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it. And it just, it was just, it's just a horrible movie. It's, it's just terrible, horrible, bad. Oh, God. <laughs> and I went to see this crap, too. <laughs> that's what made it so bad. I was hoping, well, maybe something will, uh, uh, be good about this picture. But no, like I said, the leads are terrible. We don't care about anybody in this film. Uh, and some of the uh, it's like some of the scenes don't even make any sense. The guy goes to the library talking about he got any books about the Bye Bye Man, and oh God, what what is wrong with people like that? Uh, oh well, I think I've ranted on this movie enough, and it was moving enough. 
But that's my number one film. That's my number one worst horror film of 2017, The Bye Bye Man. So, my horror fans, what do you think about my worst top five worst horror pictures of 2017? Do you agree with it? Do you think there's movies even worse than, than these than these five? Uh, leave your comments down in the comment section below and tell me whether or not do you agree with my list or what are your worst five worst horror pictures of 2017? Keep in mind, I didn't see there was a lot of pictures that came out this year that were bad. Uh, some people liked them, some people hated them. Uh, hey, look, I'm pretty sure that my list might be similar to yours. It might not be, but tell me what yours are and leave them comments on the comment section. Well, like I said before, it was a good year for horror. We had some great, uh, great horror movies that come out this year. And of course, unfortunately, we had some bad ones this year. But that's how it is. It, whether it's a horror movie or an action picture or anything else, you're always going to have good and you're always going to have bad. And that's why I love doing these lists because you get a lot of fun doing them. Uh, I know I do. I'm pretty sure anyone else gets a lot of them. Gets a lot of fun doing these type of videos as well. And I can't wait for next year as we're going to do this all over again. Well, that's my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way you can become part of the horror experience with me, the horror miser money G. And as always, all my social media links will be down at the description box below as well. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember, horror rules.